Hello everyone, I am Akhil Koguru. Today I will be presenting on a paper titled A Complexity Measure by Thomas McCabe. The author of the paper is Thomas J. McCabe. Uh, his areas of interest were software metrics, software quality and software maintenance and also in software tools. He is a member of American Mathematical Association. Uh, psychrometric complexity was developed by McCabe and so it is also called as McCabe complexity. The current paper was published in IEEE in 1976 and this paper has been cited 3251 times. Coming to the research questions, uh, the main goal of this paper is to find a, a mathematical technique or a quantitative measure which can find the complexity of a given program. Uh, developers spend more than half of the time in testing and maintaining the software. Uh, the, and sometimes the complexity of the program is measured with the size of the program. So does that mean that uh, the complexity of the gets reduced if the if the size of the program is less? No. Uh, the one of the example mentioned in the paper is a 50 line program having 25 consecutive if and else statements. Such a program will have more than more paths and only a small fraction of those will ever get tested. So the next approach is. Uh, to measure the complexity of the program using some mathematical techniques which somehow counts the number of control paths through a program and this with this mathematical approach uh, we can identify the modules uh, that are difficult to test or maintain based on their complexity measure the cyclomatic complexity or the complexity measure was developed uh, by McCabe so it is also known as McCabe complexity or cyclomatic complexity uh, the cyclomatic complexity or, or the complexity measure is nothing but the measure of uh, complexity of a graph which in turn is the measure of the program's uh, compl uh, complexity. Uh, in, for, in complexity measure, we count the number of control paths of the program but uh, one main drawback uh, in this approach is any program uh, with loops will have infinite number of paths and it is not possible for a software developer to test all these paths. To get around that problem, uh, we, we want to base a measure not on the total number of paths, but we want to measure the complexity on the basic paths. These basic paths are the paths uh, which in combination can yield all the possible paths a program can take. Before going further into the topic, let's know what these terms mean. Uh, first one is the program graph. Uh, a program graph uh, is nothing but a, di a directed graph in which the nodes are either uh, uh, entire statements or a statement fragments. Uh, this program graph can be sequence, shell or conditional. Uh, in sequence, the node will be or the edge will be from one node to another and in conditional, at the condition, uh, the paths branch apart but merge together uh, at the end. The second one is nodes. Uh, nodes are nothing but uh, the entire statements or the statement fragments, which is basically a block of code. And the third one is edges. Edges are the execution path from one node to another. Uh, we can measure the complexity of a graph or a complexity of a program in two ways. The first one is through a mathematical formula. Uh, the formula is uh, V of G is equal to E minus N uh, plus P where uh, V is the cyclometric uh, measure complexity or the complexity measure, G is the graph of the program and E is the number of uh, edges, N is the number of nodes and P is the number of components. Uh, P is always two for program graphs. Uh, P is nothing uh, is the number of components uh, which is a rough measure of uh, testing effort. The larger the number, uh, the number, the more you need to do test. The second way uh, to find the complexity measure of a program is uh, in a strong in a, in a graph the cyclomatic number or the complexity measure is equal to the number of linear independent paths. Uh, let's see about this uh, through an example in the next slide. Uh, let us consider a graph G of a program. Uh, here we have total six uh, nodes that is A, B, C, D, E and F and we have a total of nine edges. Uh, edges are nothing but the execution paths from one node to another. Uh, for example, the execution this is one edge, this is one edge and this is one edge. So there are total number of uh, nine edges and the uh, P, the value of P which is uh, the number of components uh, for a program graph uh, will be always two. 
and by substituting all these values we get the cyclometric complexity uh, as phi the same can be uh, find out by calculating the independent paths in a in a graph these phi are the independent paths that we can have uh, in the in this graph so uh, the cyclometric complexity or the complexity measure can be can either be find out through a formula or by calculating the independent paths uh, now let's look at how the cyclometric complexity behaves when the program is decomposed uh, here we are having one main program M which is calling two subroutines A and B. Now, if we want to calculate the cyclometric complexity for this entire program uh, uh, entire program using the formula E minus N plus B, uh, we are having 13 edges and 13 nodes. And coming to the number of components, uh, the number of components uh, that is P will be 6. Uh, as I said uh, in the beginning, uh, that the P uh, will be always two for a program graph. So as we are having as we are having three program graphs here, so the no total number of uh, components that is the P value will be six. And by substituting all these uh, edges, nodes, and the number of components in the formula, we'll we'll be getting the overall complexity of the entire graph as six. Uh, now let's let's try to calculate the cyclometric complexity for each of these program graphs individually by substituting uh, the edges and the nodes and the number of components uh, in the in the formula we will be getting the uh, cyclometric complexity for each of these individual graphs uh, program graphs as uh, 1 2 and 3 respectively for the main program and the two subroutines a and b now we can see that uh, the cyclometric complexity for the entire graph is same as the summation of their individual uh, uh, individual graphs. Uh, calculating the cyclometric complexity uh, using the formula E minus uh, in n plus p where is a quite a tedious one because we need to find all the number of edges, the number of nodes and then finally substitute them in the formula to find the cyclometric complexity. Uh, so here uh, in the paper the, the author has described or has mentioned two simple techniques, uh, two shortcut methods to calculate the complexity, uh, cyclometric complexity. Uh, one is through program syntactic constructs and the second one uh, is through graph form. Uh, in program uh, syntactic constructs, the cyclometric complexity is calculated uh, just by adding 1 to the number of predicates. Here predicates are nothing but the binary decisions or the conditional statements that is the if else, uh, while, uh, do well, do statements etc. Uh, and coming to the graph form, uh, the cyclometric complexity is calculated using the Euler's formula which is n minus e plus r equal to 2. Uh, where n is the number of vertices, e is the edges, and r is the regions. If we rearrange this formula a little bit uh, to get the value of r, that is the regions, uh, the uh, val reg uh, r value will be uh, e minus n plus 2, which is basically the cyclometric com uh, complexity formula, uh, and 2 is uh, the number of components uh, for a program graph. So, uh, using this graph form, the cyclometric complexity is nothing but just the number of regions and uh, these two uh, shortcuts are used to calculate the cyclometric complexity. Coming to the reducibility, uh, it is nothing but uh, the process of removing uh, the subgraphs or the subroutines uh, which have a unique entry and the exit node. What that means is a, a program graph uh, can be reduced to a program of unit complexity. This cyclomatic uh, or this reducibility is done when the cyclo uh, cyclomatic complexity becomes too large. Uh, that is, we identify and remove the subgraphs uh, with unique entry and exit points. For example, here the cyclometric complexity is 4. Uh, to reduce that, we need to identify the subgraphs which have unique entry and exit points. Uh, here in this figure, the subgraph, uh, is, the subgraph is identified uh, with the dotted circle. This entire subgraph uh, can be removed of the single node uh, A. And now here in this figure, uh, we have uh, identified this subgraph uh, which has a unique entry and exit point. Uh, so we can remove this uh, subgraph uh, with a single node uh, B here, as shown here. Uh, now we can remove this entire subgraph uh, with the node and can be replaced with a node C. 
uh, we can see how uh, this program has been reduced step by step uh, to a linear program uh, which has the cyclomagnetic complexity of 1. All that we have done so far brings us back uh, to the testing which is our motivation for proposing the cyclometric complexity. Uh, for a, Let us consider program P and V is the uh, complexity measure of that program and the number of paths tested is AC. If uh, AC that is the actual complexity is less than the uh, complexity, cyclometric complexity, it means that there is definitely need for more testing that is more paths have to be tested or uh, reduce the complexity of the program by removing some of the decisions uh, in the in the graph or simplify the code to be more linear uh, this is where the cyclometric complexity is measured or is used as a guide uh, for testing because when actual number of paths tested is compared against the cyclometric complexity we can discover the paths that are not tested so a cyclometric complexity is a metric that allows us to identify the software modules uh, which will be difficult to test or maintain. Uh, these are my references and all the diagrams and the uh, discussion that I have done are from these uh, references.